accept it. Yes, of All course. Right. We so, need to double up our intelligence too. All right. Uh, let's move on to our next story. Uh, the southeast region of Nigeria is still in search of lasting peace and the release of their son uh, may be key to achieving that. As such, talks about the release of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP. Namdekanu, insecurity in the region and other issues topped the agenda of the meeting between former president Sudushegu Basajo and some leaders of Ohanese Indigo worldwide. The Secretary General of the Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization, OK Emuche, says the closed door meeting with the president of the group, Emmanuel Uwayawo, and his Oweri Imo State home was very symbolic and crucial. He added that the deliberations were fruitful. Bikil, uh, it's a new year and um, topping the list of concerned issues for the uh, leadership of the Indigos is the unconditional release of Namdekano. This campaign has been on for about two years. Is it high time? I think uh, the most important thing is securing the Southeast. The level of insecurity in the Southeast is troubling. There are many people who ordinarily would love to go home, but they didn't go home, told their parents to come down to Lagos, and they gave them uh, whatever they felt like giving them. That insecurity is the biggest problem. And many people tie the insecurity to the continued incarceration of uh, Mazin and the Kano. Remember, the incarceration of uh, Mazin and the Kano was what we kill. Okay, are you there? All right, uh, we may have to come back to Bikio mm. then. So, Kuala, let me have your take on this. Like I said, is it high time? Uh, well, I, for me, I think, um, let me take from where BQ, you know, you know stopped. We need, um, we need a, a, a permanent solution to the insecurity in the Southeast. And uh, one of the solutions, maybe, for, to me, can be a political solution. Because if we are to continue with the way it is now, we might um, end up having um, this insecurity, you know, in, in, the, in the Southeast. Yes, the law has to take its course, okay? But I feel that since he is the arrowhead mm -hmm. of what people are clamoring for, we can, you know, bring him in the, on the table and tell him that this is what we need. We need that particular region to be at peace and then get things from him. And when we mean, I'm, I'm saying get things from him, get him to agree that peace will return to, to the Southeast. Because we cannot, um, Southeast used to be a very beautiful place. I served in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. And I, for yeah. once, I never, I never you know, had this fear that at some point, I would always have this fear of, you know, traveling to the southeast or having, you know, for people to say, oh, I can't go to some part of the southeast. Even there were some parts that of recently, the places I used to go on a regular basis, I started hearing that those places you can't even go there mm. anymore in the southeast. And I was like, what? So it means <laughs> back then, you know, if it was to be now, I'm not sure I can. You know, so if the president or the, the, uh, the former president is trying to make that move with Ohanese, it has to be in agreement with, you know, with, what, with the present administration. We should be able to find a political solution you know, for, for us to bring peace in the Southeast. Mikhail, are you back with us? All right. Uh, so, Ebeka, uh, the federal government has always argued that once a case touched on national security, the rights of the individual affected takes secondary place. Well, that is just uh, semantics. That's academic. You see, there are certain issues that border more on the political 
than on the judicial. Like Namdi Kano's case, it's something that I have said from time that the best approach is a political solution. Because if you want to go through the process of his trial, well, I don't know how long it will take and where it will end. But the point is that I commend um, ex-president Obasanjo for this initiative. And I think we should also be on our guard because there are people, there are fifth columnists, you know, who usually want to ensure that certain conflicts just remain and government continues to spend money. I'll give you, I remind you of what Obasan just said in 2022, how he met with uh, Boko Haram leaders in 2011 in Medugri, and they told him that their prime motivation for starting Boko Haram was because they had no jobs, apart from support for Sharia, they had no jobs, and security agencies were pursuing them all over the place. Do you know what happened? The unfortunate thing that happened. Obasan just said that just after he left Medugri, some people went and shot the person who facilitated the meeting, mm. Baba Kura Fugu, mm -mm. was an in-law to the founder of Boko Haram. They shot him dead. Mm -hmm. And he said at that time they didn't have external connection. They had not, their feet had not been firmly planted on the ground. But look at today. From Boko Haram, we now have ISWAP. So I think the earlier, the better. Let's try and put things in proper perspective for the good of our nation. If there are political solutions to certain things, let's sort them out quickly so that we can move forward. So I asked that question because uh, the federal government continues to say there is intelligence reports uh, that releasing Kano from detention would worsen uh, insecurity in the southeast. Region. Who gave them the intelligence report? I'm an Ibo man from the southeast. Who gave them the intelligence report? Do you know that this last December, the number of people, in fact, before this last Christmas, a top security officer had told me that they got intelligence report that the number of people that will be coming back, some people had not come back home for 10 years, that they will come back. Mm -hmm. I can show you videos, events that held, yes. events, meetings, some people who had not come home for more than 10 years. Things were holding. Yes, there was this unfortunate incident at Oga Junction, you know, where some, some hoodlums attacked, you know, the convoy of a politician. But the security agencies responded quickly and killed two of them. So releasing them the can will douse the tension in the southeast and help to resolve a lot of things. Anybody saying telling giving them an intelligence report should come out and tell us the source and the scope. His release will solve issues in the southeast. Mm. Mikhail, you're back with us. And like I've told the gentleman in the studio, federal government says once, uh, once a, a case touched on national security, the rights of the individual affected take secondary place. And that's true. That's true. But um, there is no matter be, that is uh, beyond uh, a peaceful resolution. You've seen countries that were at war uh, for up to 60 years. We've seen groups within a country at war for up to 60 years come to the round table. So whatever we need to do that will bring peace to the Southeast and stop the needless slaughter going on in the Southeast, I think this year that has to be considered. I could recall that during his campaigns, Mr. President said he would be willing to negotiate with uh, any group uh, in the interest of peace in the southeast. As a person, I will encourage him to do that. I've been doing this for up to two years. I demanded uh, for Kano's release in exchange for him giving up his armed struggle, his uh, campaign of violence against the Nigerian state. And I still stand on that, even though I read comments from some of my southern brothers uh, describing me as a, as a tribalist. A man uh, with a traditional title from SOS, the Southeast, Okulora, where no Guaguleri cannot be a tribalist. I'm consistent in asking for uh, a negotiated uh, settlement of this problem. I believe it's possible. I'll be happy to see that happen. So uh, it's good that about
Abike, are you there? I don't know what they talked about. Maybe very soon they will come out and tell us. But we want to see peace happen in the southeast. Hanos uh, releases related to that. Mm. That's okay. Your final take on this. <clears throat> of all, you know, it's like we've all agreed that you know, um, his release, you know, will bring peace, you know, in the southeast. I think the federal government, they are listening to us. It's something that they can also put in, you know, in the front burner and begin to think about it. I know uh, the deputy speaker of the House of Rep recently had yes, Benjamin a project, yeah, yes. peace in the southeast uh, yes. project, you know. So, and I think uh, one of the issues, you know, that we had discussed was was uh, the release of Nam Dekano and um, how to see how peace can return in the southeast. Because if there is no peace in a region, <laughs> there can never be development. Yeah, yeah, I know that most of my friends are actually traveled this year to, to the southeast, and I asked them. Uh, how was it? They said everywhere was peaceful. Oh, very peaceful. You know, they said everywhere was peaceful. <laughs> they even did housewarming, you know, and so many people came from, they told it from the everywhere. They told it. You know, so it means that peace can actually return to the southeast. Yes. If concerted efforts, you know, even put in place. So it's, it's something that um, the, you know, the government can look at, you know, to release him and then let him put pen to paper and say this is, I say I will not do this, I will do this. No, don't forget, there are so many light hands there in the southeast, you know, in the hands of so many young people who are supposed to, you know, be in the farm, farming or going to their shop to go and open, you know. So, so that, is where we, that is where we are going to hold their leaders into account. So we are not just going to release him without, you know, allow him to come and write something that I am, this is my bond. And my word should be my bond. We'll make him sign those things. Let you let Nigerians know that okay, if you are going to, we are talking about political so solution now. You know, okay, so we'll make sure that he does not go back, you know, to his old ways. And and by the time we do that, I believe that we'll be able to get a permanent solution to it because keeping him there is fueling more anger. Okay. So, but we need the Southeast to return to how it was before. It's a beautiful place that people can go, do, they do their businesses and come back. So if Nam Dekano is out there, then we'll now begin to look at who are the people that are following the insecurity there. And then the government can now start dealing with it. And I believe that since everybody is now saying release him, release him, if they release him, he can even be the one to champion the peace, the real peace that we are even looking for. All right, so Emeka, let me come to you quickly as we wrap up. Another angle or another issue that formed part of that meeting uh, was the President General of the Indigos persistently calling for an end to the alleged margin marginalization of the region. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, yeah, somebody will say that every region in Nigeria is marginalized. marginalized. Yes, um, the point is that if I don't, like Chino, Professor Chino Achebet said, that until the lion begins to tell his own stories, Mm. The narrative will glorify the hunter. So the Southeast has to tell his own stories that, yes, we are marginalized and we need more federal presence, which is true. So definitely it should be, um, it should be considered because two key problems in the Southeast. One, unemployment. Unemployment is high. Jobs are needed. A lot of youths are unemployed. They need, they need, they need jobs. Then another thing, you know, people at a point began to, you know, resort to traditional religion <clears throat> with promises that, oh, they will get wealthy, they would, you know, they could do anything and no bullets would touch them, penetrate mm -hmm. their bodies and all of that. And then again, the governors of the Southeast need to also invest in technology. They need to assist the security agencies with technology, tracking devices, and devices that will help them to do their jobs much better. That, you see, the security agencies in the South, is are really, they are really trying. They are really, really trying. It, it's, it's a dangerous situation because you don't even know sometimes who you are up against. But I give them kudos. But what I do hope is that the Indian American matter will be quickly resolved, one. And then some of these checkpoints in the South, especially the military, the military checkpoints, 
where people are being dehumanized. You have to ask people to alight from their vehicles, walk and some distance raise their hands before up. raise their hands. Come on, you cannot do that. You are dehumanizing the people. You expect these same people to cooperate with you in dealing with criminal elements. You shouldn't now treat them as if they don't have rights. These are individuals. These are human beings. Yes, I know the security agencies will tell you they've been attacked at their checkpoints, but I want to tell you that there are other ways by which they can avoid doing this kind of thing. Allow people to pass. Use technology a lot. And then let's get more jobs for the, for the unemployed youths. Talk to people. And then let Nigeria also ensure justice and equity for every Nigerian. A lot of this is will disappear. Mm. All right, gentlemen, let's uh, move on to another security matter. But this time, a 